Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. And like always, there are way more than 10 creations to show you guys. Links for most of everybody I talk about are in the description below. And before I jump into my favorite creations of the week, I do want to say that we've got a web store that sells amazing LEGO custom building instructions. We work with some out of the world talented designers from everywhere in the world and buying instructions is a great way to both help support us as well as the amazingly talented designers that we work with. I'm still playing around a little bit with the format of this video so I'm going to be doing some honorable mentions in the beginning and then jumping into the top 10. This flower and frog by Cecil Fritzvold are dynamite. Some amazing details here from Anthony Wilson. I think that's the little shop of horrors flower plant on top of the fridge and more dynamite and even more dynamite from Cecil. Sunder 59 knows how to do ships like nobody else just about. There are some amazing colors in this huge digital build from X Sandbox. Andreas Linander did a rather interesting and almost disturbing design and if you look really closely you can see a little red hidden micro figure. Sergi's Art Nouveau Candelabra very much reminds me of Beauty and the Beast. Love the perspective from Tony Saba here. If this is not an ideas set I don't know what Arco Noid is thinking. This giant model is titled Berlin 1945. It looks like the very last days of World War II on the Soviet German front. And there are some amazing details for a destroyed bit of a house. General Hughes did a fat, fat plane that looks pretty awesome. It's very chubby and chibi. And then Barbara Howell did a still life with fruit. I'm telling you, uh, with a little bit of a better camera or different lighting, you could have a very, very artsy looking photo here. And the designs for the fruit are simple, yet lend themselves really, really well to the Lego style. Alex Totalman needs to take more pictures close up. This is such a cool scene from afar, but I'm sure there's plenty of other details that you could get lost in if you were looking a little bit closer. There's so many cool things here. David Roberts did this in digital. I wonder what it would look like in real life. I think they would either be ovals, those rings, or perhaps the whole thing would explode in on you. I don't really know. Hachiroku 24's Duel on Mustafar set is amazing. I love that he took a picture next to the more recent one that came out. Somebody find me a better example of flowing lava detail. I doubt you will. This is titled Archangel Michael by Tino Putianen. And Tennis Glasker did some Porsche 911s with some amazing detail. And I think he earned his right to put as many stickers on those models as he wants. Now we're jumping into top 10. And not in any particular order of best to worst. The first one here is from Peter Dennison, and it is called Dunedin Railway Station. Absolutely massive model, and it's a project that took this guy roughly five years, I'm sure, on and off building other projects. The dark gray of the building really makes that white pop on the outside. It looks amazing. The small hedge designs in the center have some really fun little techniques. This rounded corner on the edge looks relatively difficult, but in general, this whole scene just has a lot of nice realistic muted colors enhanced with really really bright colorful ones and there's just something about it that makes this whole scene feel very real. From Jaffa this is called the Great He Goat. I don't know what else to say this character design is just interesting and it's also very creepy as it should be and I'm mostly just impressed that the face of the goat really does look like the face of a goat. Lever pieces for eyes makes a lot of sense, but it especially does for a goat eye because they are kind of like these weird long pupils. And of course, the atmosphere of this photo really, really enhances the presence of this character. Cohen Zwanenberg did something that I've never seen anybody do before, and it is amazing. This is titled Tutankhamen. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That is the famous pharaoh whose tomb was discovered almost totally intact or I think completely intact and that includes the gold encrusted uh, head of the tomb which is what this build is depicting. I've heard that if you see the tomb head in person it really is breathtaking and uh, this guy must have spent for ever putting this thing together. It looks so cool. Looking at the front, you can see how impressive it is, but looking at the back, there's also so much detail put into here, and it really takes your breath away. Here's the guy uh, trying to hold the thing or move it. I have no doubt that it's extremely heavy, and he also made a little fun micro build as well. Here is yet another amazing render from Lego Nuts. It's titled Let's Go on a Date. We've got Mickey and Minnie going through sort of like an old European style town. Who knows? Maybe this 
is a street in Disneyland, I don't really know. The building techniques seem certainly nice enough, but there's just something so amazing uh, about how he manages to create such a complete scene built from Lego bricks. He does this every single time. If you haven't seen his other photos, I highly, highly recommend that you do so. And now we're looking at Schwarzwald Castle. I think I pronounced that right, and I'm so sorry, I don't know if I can pronounce the name of the actual <laughs> builder correctly here. There's something that works so incredibly well by just taking three tones from Lego. We've got the dark bluish gray, the light bluish gray, and then black is kind of the accent color so to speak. There's something about this model that just works stylistically. There's an offset hallway that cuts out of the main body of the castle that goes towards the tower that gives this whole thing just a little bit more of a cartoony or animated feel and I love the choice of the designer to make the single tree or actually two trees in the build totally black to match up with the rest of any accent colors that you might see. There's just a really nice distribution of light and dark coloration throughout this entire build. The stonework is incredible incredibly good. I especially like the small staggered lighter stones that you can see at the front of the castle here. And who knew you could get so much more out of a build when you didn't include any color or hardly any color. I suppose the flesh tones of the characters technically count. This is titled, We're Going to Need a Bigger Container by Bart de Bob Lair. Based on the scenario here, it kind of looks like uh, some astronauts have walked in on a giant, horribly terrifying insectoid alien race and this is perhaps maybe where the babies are born you can see a large sort of mother larva like creature with uh, eggs or something on its chest the scene is both funny and disturbing I like that they used I think a little bit of dry ice to get that effect in the corner and this is also a two-for-one for Bart because he's got a wicked sense of humor he calls this one grub salad and you know this guy has good taste because he's got plyboo love plyboo from Aaron Newman this is Cody the bear I believe this was a commissioned build. Aaron says he had only two weeks to put it together, but it looks amazing. There's always going to be something almost timeless about the completely studded look for Lego bricks on the outside. It always looks better when you do it with plates like Aaron did here. And he also added a few expert techniques to really give a little bit more life and animation. The arm turns downward a little bit for Cody the bear. The head is tilted to the side, which is amazing. That looks really difficult to pull off. And he's standing on a wonderful cool interesting colorful box detailing on the bottom this is technically a character from a company I looked him up just now to see what he looks like I think Aaron's honestly looks better now we're looking at Jack the Mad's Scottish Kelpie these are aquatic horses from Scottish folklore according to the description and apparently uh, they collect children on their back and then ride into the ocean to consume them it's certainly an interesting mythical creature I haven't seen the horse done in this way the horse is always combined with other creatures to become some type of mythical animal but adding a giant aquatic tail onto the back makes sense it kind of flows well with the shape of the body the mane is just three long tentacles that flow along the entire arc of this horse's back which looks so great and I doubt you can really move the pose of this horse body too well though I don't think you'd really want to this is kind of in the perfect position that you'd want this creature stylistically my favorite part of the build is the offset connection for the buildable figure feet that make up the neck of the horse and is it just me or does it always seem to be a little bit more proportionally accurate when people build with Technic or Bionicle pieces. Certainly seems like the case here. And now we are looking at Alvaro Gunnowin's Wave Dash Anti-Grab Racer. At first glance, it might look like a decently detailed, interesting little flyer, but really when you look up close, Alvaro is showing off with his skills. Right on the edge of the cockpit and just around the side of the body, there are so many angular connections that match up flush. It is insane. The rounded white shoulder of the first pontoon matches up with those yellow cheese wedges. This 1x2 slope matches up with the slopes along the shoulder perfectly, which then concurrently is flush with the offset slope pieces. And I mean, I don't know, just trying to describe it, every single connection here is a calculated and perfectly trouble shot little ballet of connections. I attempt to do things like this in my free time, and Alvaro here has certainly humbled my abilities by just taking a look 
at this little, it's a really little uh, speeder or wave dash anti-grab racer as he calls it. Now this build suffers from a lack of closer pictures. This is the only one that I see here from Max Fudal or Fudal, sorry if I can't pronounce correctly. It is called Order 66 on Utapau. Oh, wait a second, uh, he's actually added some more pictures as of uh, me starting this recording. Oh, here we go. Yes, there are so many more details that I knew he had put into this massive model. The designer says it took him uh, over two years to put together. And not only is this an awesome Star Wars scene, but the level of detail here is extremely high. Often when people put something large together, there is this feeling that it's impressive because it's big, but not necessarily impressive because of the cool building techniques. That is not the case here. The techniques are awesome. The stylistic choices for the different scenery looks great. I love the way the water was done, the way it gets a little bit lighter, closer to the splash or closer to the edge of the water. And the interior shots of this uh, base, I suppose, on Utapau has great subtle mechanical details every place you look. And that is the top 10 mocks of the week video for you guys. Of course, there's plenty more that I didn't have time to talk about. Let me know which ones were your favorite in the comments below. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!